Okay, so here is the website of the scammers. So now we're going to go ahead and navigate to this website, through this website, so we can find my pieces. So I'm going to go into tops, blouses. Okay, so here is my top. So let's see. And it is $24.72. It has, oh, let's see the pictures. So this is my pictures that I've taken on my design and style. This is me in the photos. And obviously they put their tag on my photo. These thieves. And I guess, ew, this is what you get in. See what I, oh. So now the shipping has increased. I have to pay $4 for shipping and it looks like it's going to take 10 to 24 days. So it's definitely coming from China. So I paid $29.16 for this and I'm not too happy because I don't like fueling scammers businesses like this. So here is my confirmation page, but I'm going to wait for it to come in so we can go ahead and unbox it and I'll give my proper thoughts about it as a designer of the original design. Um, I will return and show you. As I sit here, I'm just like reflecting on my whole career. And I have spent so many years trying to perfect my craft and trying to get it better. And I haven't yet seen the fruit of my labor. And as of right now, I feel like Everybody likes my products. Everybody likes to consume my my stuff. When it comes down to me putting a price on the things that I do, it's a problem. Oh, actually, we're not going to pay you. We'd rather st steal your stuff. And I'm sitting here wondering, like, you know, why things are not working. But or on the flip side, I see my stuff being popular and taken to make profit of. So everybody can make profit off of me, make profit of everything that I've done, but... I can't make profit of my own stuff so it's just a very like vicious cycle and to be honest I hate it I decided to not take no interviews or give advice because I felt like all the efforts that I have done for all these years I haven't seen the success that I want to see in my work so if you're new to this channel, you don't know who I am. My name is Yella Tabois and I'm a fashion designer. I have a clothing line called Yella Tabois and I handcraft all my pieces. If you want to know details, a little bit more detail about, about my craftsmanship, uh, craftsmanship, you can check out my other videos on the channel, which will give you an idea of where I stand when it comes to how I produce my pieces. So in this video, I'm going to be very blunt and real. This video is going to be a very unpopular opinion. And for a very long time, I kept my mouth closed and just try to focus on my work because I um, am a person who's about doing things instead of me talking about things. I don't want people to get distracted by a personality designer, a chatty designer. I want you to focus on the work so that way when you see my work, you, it speaks for itself. You can leave your opinions, your comments down below in the description box because I don't live in a world where I'm going to be sitting here blocking people and deleting comments or anything like that because, to be honest, we live in a good and bad world. There's good and bad in everything that, you know, we do and we're going to live in it. And even if I'm in my own lane, minding my own business, there's always something interjecting. So it's like I'm trying to avoid all the problems, but that's not the case. So we're going to keep it at that. But if you are disrespectful or rude, YouTube has a good way of filtering comments. And if it passed through the system and I feel like it's beyond disrespectful and you're being um, spammy, I am going to go in and remove you. That's it. Because I'm not going to have anybody, I'm not going to tolerate anything from anybody that's crazy. So first I want to talk about um, the knocking off. And it's not even knocking off now, it's like more like stealing. So I was on social media, you know, and it, I've done a video like this years ago. And I did not want to come on here to be like ranting and, and 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 yelling and screaming I said you know what I'd rather come on here and be a create a whole teachable moment so the way the fashion industry has been going 
knocking off hasn't been nothing new knocking off has not never been something like oh my gosh but now as we got into the digital age i feel like people or businesses that do these things um are just basically thieves first and foremost um i want to give a shout out to everybody who had reached out to me on the social media about um my pieces being stolen by uh these companies these fast fashion companies and it's not literally, literally like making an inspiration is basically stealing my photos that I've taken of my garments to put on my website to sell and then they take it to put on their website and they sell it for a low, low price. Um, a few people have reached out to me with the advertisements that they run on Instagram and Pinterest and all that stuff. And at first I just threw it over my shoulder like, you know, whatever. But until it wasn't until I was on Pinterest looking through my feed that I saw one of my products, my photos, promoted to me. And this is where I just lost it. Like I was really, really livid. I did a video like this years ago where a fashion, um, those fast fashion, it was a Chinese owned fast fashion business went and stole all the photos of my bridal jumpsuit collection. I mean, literally down to every single one. And every time I see these types of businesses, it just makes me so mad because it's like, here I am trying to cater to an audience to so someone can buy into me, you know, buy into my dream because I'm very passionate about what I do. And then you have the nurse to sit there and take my stuff and then not even create your own product and then put in your own materials. You go and steal the picture and put it onto your website. The hottest trend right now is owning a boutique. So since I am a designer, you're not gonna know who I am because you don't know me yet. And you see my stuff in a cheapy boutique. So you probably thinking as a consumer going to see that they're seeing this stuff all over the cheapy boutique. Now, when they come to my website now to shop my stuff, they're going to say, well, you must be buying from the Chinese businesses because we see these all over the Chinese stuff. So nobody is going to cause a, a confusion. And it's not fair for me to go and put all this effort for someone to go and just steal my photo. See, I don't care if you go and um, make your version, inspired version of that. And I know that the customer is not my customer. That's fine. But the thing about it is with me that irks me is the fact that you're taking my picture to go ahead and sell and put in front of people so you can scam and send them some BS. I've noticed that on YouTube, people love to consume these type of videos. When I've seen these type of videos, it's just cringy just to see that you guys support these type of businesses. So I said, since you love these type of videos, I'm going to go and give you the different perspective of someone who's getting hurt off of businesses who steal like this. So I went ahead and bought um, the style that they stole. Okay, so this is my top. This one is handcrafted and this is the top that they stole. I'm not going to go into details on how I constructed it because obviously they're watching my stuff. I went ahead and purchased their version of what they trying to sell to the consumer. So here's the package. Um, I had placed this order. I had bought this a long time ago and I just didn't get around to it because I wasn't really interested. When it came, it was already ripped. I mean, I really don't need to even cut into it. But So, this is it. So, they put their whatever. So, I've never seen it. Wow. Okay. So this is the top. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on a hanger so you guys can fully see what this is. Okay, so this is the top. This is so cheap, it's, it's ridiculous. And then here's the craftsmanship that, this is what it looks like. 
but this is the actual garment and then this is mine so I want to give this top a fair chance and give it a good press so I went ahead and ironed it out the best I could because the fiber quality doesn't really do well on ironing. So as you can see, both uh, shirts here are placed side to side and instantly you can see the difference. Both shirts are polyester. And as you can see, my version of the polyester is different from the fake version of the polyester. This polyester is on the low end side and my polyester is on the higher quality side. Polyester fabrics are not all made the same, and I like to select um, polyester fabric that mimics natural fiber fabrics because natural fiber fabrics are very expensive, like silk, and this is another alternative for um, selecting another fabric that is just as nice as the real deal here is a close-up shot of the fabric up close this is the fake version fabric uh, this type of quality poly I would not gravitate towards because it's very cheap um, I wouldn't even use this for lining because even though it's a fine weave it's a clean finish it doesn't have any breathable um, spaces in the weave to allow the fabric to breathe. So it, it would keep the person very hot and sweaty and sticky on a humid day. Um, it might work better for winter, but it's not comfortable because the fabric is very stiff. And that's something I would not gravitate towards. But whereas mine, mine is more weaved differently than the fake version. And this weave is more of on a crepey beady side where with the way they weave the the fibers it allows it to have open pockets so that way the fabric can drape nice uh breathe on the skin and also mimics the natural fiber fabrics now those are the type of fabrics that i like to gravitate towards when i'm using synthetic fabrics like polyester um, I try to look for the highest quality. Now, if a customer doesn't understand fabric, they will assume that all polyester would be the same. And if they study or touch fabrics and pay attention to what they buy, they will know the difference between a higher quality polyester that costs a little bit more than the low end quality poly uh, quality. So my piece here is $300. Now, the fabric alone on this piece is $36 just for fabric. And this one it took it cost me $30 $32 with shipping. So how much is fabric? So I feel like consumers these days are not fully understanding what they're buying into and think that these websites is the way to go or I don't know what the situation is but every time I see these type of website it just makes me upset that here a designer go ahead going ahead and making their things taking the time to take the photos and all that stuff and to for someone to just take it and put on their website do you know that this I made this about a year ago I didn't sell not one top I did not sell not one top on this and I don't think it's a, pro a problem with the price because there are stores that sell $300 tops that looks like even worse than $300 and they have their consumers to purchase because the consumer is there the consumer is there but I never not one made one sale and here's a company stealing my pictures making sales obviously I invested my earn my hard-earned money on this junk I'm not even gonna use this this is like a waste of money to me this is expensive at $32 I could put the, I could put the $32 into my business I'm not gonna waste my money on something like this I don't even know who made this but you know who made this though now the reason why it's three hundred dollars is that the fabric alone is thirty six dollars when I price my pieces I price my pieces on um, on making sure that I get paid proper wages see when you get these pieces from these fash fashion businesses we don't know if the people behind here is getting paid proper wages now for Eric Dress to sit here and steal my pictures, making money off of my pictures, 
while I'm sitting here trying to make a sale. I can't actually I can't even make a sale on this tell you the truth because now the fabric is sold out so I will have to find another fabric that complements this style for me to go ahead and bring it back again so I lost a sale I basically lost out of this whole entire you know silhouette I lost and Eric dress is making money off off of the my 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 photos which is very I just it just makes me so mad so Eric dress I'm going to contact you to remove my pieces off your website because I sit, I can't sit here and tolerate a business taking business away from me put in your own material put on your own model and then photograph it and then get the consumer to buy your stuff because that's the price point they're looking for so they're gonna pay for what they see but don't sit there and use my pictures to bait your customers thinking that this is what you're gonna get and really this is what you get because this is two different things I don't see the same thing yeah we have a, a pleated pleated folded neckline we both have this but it's not the same thing it doesn't flow it doesn't even move the same way like look at this this is making a whole lot of sounds mine is very drapey so let's get back into pricing so here my top is priced at $300 so I prop when I go and make something I'm handcrafting it I'm in New York City I believe in proper wages. I don't sit here and make something less than what I'm getting paid for. Now, I have expertise. I have skills. I can try, basically decide to charge myself how much per hour if I wanted to do per hour. $100 per hour or $30 per hour or $20 per hour. Just like regular folk who go to work who go and get a proper um, rate per hour for what they're going to do. Because at the end of the day, you're doing a job. So I just happen to do a job as to supply pieces that I handcraft in my store for people to come and purchase. So if I'm going to purchase a piece, if I'm going to make a piece that someone purchased, they're buying into proper wages. People don't understand the value behind sewing. Now, a lot of people don't sew because materials and what it takes to do the actual item costs more than going to the store and buying it. Fast fashion, they cater to a market where they exploit people overseas. That's why they outsource everything overseas because if they were to do it here in the U.S., it would be so much money and people would have been like, nope, we're not going to pay for it. That's why they go overseas and exploit those people and get them made for cheap so that way you will say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll buy a $36 top, but I won't buy a $300 top. Now, the reason why my top is $300, again, I live in New York City. Minimum wage here is $15 an hour. So if I decided, you know what, I'm not going to charge $100 because if I were to charge $100 an hour, then this top would be extremely expensive. But it's not. So I humbled myself and said, you know what, we're going to do the minimum wage. Nobody in the U.S. will accept a job from anybody below minimum wage. And it's very fair. That's very fair. So it takes me 16 hours to make a top. 16. So if you do the math, 15 times 16 hours, that is the price that I put on the garment along with the fabric. But at the end of the day, the customer is buying into a piece. Does it? They don't care about how long it takes. I just tell me when I'm going to receive it and that's it. So that is what they're buying into. Now, once I have my price for my labor, I add it on to the fabric with the fabric. Once those prices are set, I need to make my money back. So I then double it. That's where you make your money. And then if I really want to make a profit, so we can see profit, I triple that. Now if I have status, stats, I'm hot, I've been over here, I've been over there, everybody knows me, I can go up to five times the price. But I humbled myself and put it at three times the price. If you do the calculations, I'm still underpriced at $300. So I'm still underpricing myself to create this top. And if the customer is so concerned about proper wages, you can't be concerned about people overseas not getting paid proper wages if you're not going to pay the people in your backyard proper wages. So when you support these type of businesses, you're saying, yes, go ahead and steal. We like that you, you steal the designer's work because we don't want to pay the designer that price. So that's why they can go and make businesses off someone's labor. Majority of designers who are getting stolen from by these businesses are barely making any money. They have to work two jobs to make it happen for their business.
So it would be nice for people to support designers who are actually doing the work than someone who's stealing the work to put on their on their website. And if for those who are saying that, well, you should tag your photos, I have tagged my photos and they also Photoshop the, my tag out the photo. So what is the point of me tagging my pictures just to prove a point? Clearly you have time because you're not making the stuff, you're just stealing the pictures. So you have time to go ahead and Photoshop my name out of the photo. But nobody cares because at the end of the day, you're looking for the benefit of yourself. When you sit here and talk about sustainability, you have to make sure you know exactly what you're talking about. Sustainability and proper wages. These people overseas, these big corporations overseas exploit these people. These people have to defend themselves. They have to fend for themselves. So they take what they can get. But they're out here losing limbs losing their lives to make a five, ten dollar, thirty dollar shirt for your pleasure. So if you are sitting here screaming and yelling at the corporation saying, well, we're not going to fuel the businesses if you don't change it, it's not whatever. Then what the business is going to do is they say, OK, well, the consumer said they're not going to be buying. So we got to figure out how we're going to make this work. So this is what these big businesses do. They either take it out on you as a consumer by raising the prices or they minimize the business that they're doing with the manufacturer until they can get it right. So now, the, since they're not getting any orders, okay, if they don't come up to code based off of the, the requirements that they want, they withdraw their business from the manufacturer. So that leaves the factory with having no orders and letting the people go. And those people already in, the, um, already in their countries suffering, not making any money, and then now they have to, no, no job, so they have to fend for themselves. Some of the villages of these countries, they only have one electricity running at um, a certain point in the day. After that, it gets cut and they're out for, their, for themselves. I mean, can you blame somebody sending their children to work to make money to bring back home so we can all eat and survive? I can't blame them because that's what their product of their environment is. So you have to do whatever you need to do to survive at the end of the day. So we don't care because it's not close to us. So since we don't see it or feel it, we be like, oh, whatever. It's already made anyway, so I might as well buy it. And really, these people are sitting here suffering, trying to make ends meet. Can you get mad if they have to bring their children to the job? You know you won't tolerate that. You know you won't take anything less than minimum wage. You think they're not going to do that? They wish they could do that, but they can't because they got to live and survive. So I can't blame these people for working in, in that, um, from factories like this. But at the end of the day, if you sitting here screaming sustainability, you have to, sustainability or proper wages, you need to make sure that these businesses who's taking advantage of those people have something in place so that way those people can fend for themselves. If something like a uh, manufacturers um, decide to pull out, either have a build something where electricity is available for them 24 hours a day or provide a foundation where they can always constantly get food or something to help within the community so that way they can be so they don't sit here trying to figure out what's the next thing for them to do now i want to talk about another thing that is also one of my pet peeves about consumers as well consumers who steal designers work and take it to another designer to have it made this really irks me so i'm gonna give you a primary example recently someone had contacted me um through via email saying that they would love me to make them a special um gown for their event so i said oh my gosh you know yes i would love to do it what did you have in mind so the person comes back to an email and sends me a link to a video so I'm like oh my gosh all right so they know exactly you know my not my pricing and they saw my work so they're gonna send me a video even better I can customize that for whatever they wanted so as I went to go click the video the video led to um, a designer named classic royalty so if you are watching this classic royalty I want to give a shout out to you for creating a section for yourself um, to communicate to your potential customers and showing them how you do your stuff. Kudos to you for that. So when I received the email and I saw the link and I saw her video, I went back to the email and told the person that um, since you like her style, the best thing you would would be the best thing for you to do is have her make your design. 
because she would be the best to bring out your vision since you like her design. My aesthetic is different from her aesthetic. So the techniques that we I'm going to do is different from hers. And this is the price that I'm going to be doing it for the uh the for the for the item that you wanted. And then I never heard back from them. It is hard for designers to make money. It's very hard for black designers to make money. I know y'all gonna say whatever y'all wanna say, but it's very hard for us black designers to make money. Not only do we have competition with Chinese businesses stealing, because like I said, Chinese, business, Chinese businesses are stealing your pictures. You think you're on the gram, only on the gram? No, they're taking your stuff and posting it on their website and people are buying your designs off of a Chinese um, business. So they got that to deal with. You also got to deal with other designers who are doing the same thing you're doing too. So y'all all in the same group. Y'all doing all of the same things. Y'all in a competition together. Then you have to deal with the customer who saw your stuff, loves it, but do not want to pay your price and steals your work to take it to another designer. I am a designer. I'm not a dressmaker. I'm not a seamstress. I do not call myself a seamstress on this channel. I am not a dressmaker. I do not call myself a dressmaker on this channel. I don't even like to sew. But if it's my stuff, oh, I'm definitely going to sew. Someone else's stuff? No. I'm not inspired nor passionate to to sew someone else's design. When someone takes someone takes another designer's work and asks me to produce it, I automatically say no. It's very disrespectful to the designer who's sitting here trying to um, communicate to their customer base, their potential potential customers. You know you like it. The best thing for you to do is invest in that designer. You're gonna get what you want and be satisfied with it. Why is it that you couldn't save your money for that designer? You went to go take her designer, shop it around to other designers to see if you can get a lower price. It's very disrespectful. You're you're just as the person who steal who supports those businesses stealing other designers work. What does this make you? If you're a dressmaker, a seamstress, okay, but a designer, if you calling yourself a designer and you steal and you taking orders on other people stealing other designers work so you can do it. I understand you got to get to pay the bills, but you're not a designer. You are a seamstress or a dressmaker at best. Here's what you're doing. What you're doing is creating a whole culture of you being a knockoff. Oh, I know how to knock off somebody's stuff. So you can send me, send me all your requests. Send me all your requests. I'll take them. I'll do a whole bunch of copies. Not everybody knows you for doing a good copycat. And then when you finally decide, you know what, I want to put out one of my designs, then they, you put it out and they're like, okay, that's cute, but um, can you do so-and-so dress? Because that's what's hot right now. They're not really checking for your designs like that because they know you as a person who likes to do dupes. This is the culture you're creating. Whenever someone sends me something, I don't care even if it's a DIY request. Do not send me anything that says another designer's work. You can ask, Daniela, is can you do a, a version of what's trending? A mermaid gown with lace, illusion lace. Okay, because I'm going to do it in my style. So this brings me into corporations and brands who steal from designers. This to me is very, very dumb. Because... If you're about to go and steal from a designer, you are losing. You are losing, and here's why. The designer who's coming up with the concept is building a whole audience. Just because they are small does not mean that you should go and steal their designs so you can put them out of business and take their fan base. That's not happening. They have already cultivated um, a fan base to the style that they are doing. So their fan base is going to go to them because they're catering to them. So since you are a business who um, who who established themselves as someone who constantly turn over stuff, your consumer is expecting you to constantly bring something new. For you to bring an item that you stole from another designer is going to only last you temporarily because your consumer wants to see the next big thing. So that is not even going to hold you up. It's going to get you out the way. And if you don't bring something else within the next few, whatever time that you turn, you're going to lose your customer fan because they're not going to sit here and tolerate you supplying stuff 
that looks like another designer's work because your consumer already bought into the idea of you bringing all kinds of stuff. What you should do is be a pioneer and say, all right, since we are a fast fashion company or a big businesses or whatever, you should collaborate with the small designer. So that way when you bring something to your table, you can present it to your audience. Your audience can choose whether they wanna go and follow that designer. Okay, we see the new um, item from this month. We're collaborating with this designer. This is the collection we're collaborating with. You make money. That design makes money. The consumer sees something brand new. That's fresh. You're not going to convert your customer, your whole fan base to their fan base. Only very few of them because not everybody likes that style. But they, I like it temporarily. That's cute. But let's see what else you're going to bring next time. So that whole collection is done and out. And you're on to the next. While that designer is going to be cultivating and still growing that fan base for their own particular style so that makes you a innovator instead of someone who's stealing and what I find so crazy about these big businesses is that fashion is not that hard to design it's not that hard you know what I'm saying like there's things that you can do to refresh something everything has been done and did there's nothing new under the sun but if the way you do it the way you present it is a new fresh take for what it is at that time. I don't understand why you have to steal another designer's work just for you to put them out of business. Thinking that, oh, because they're small, nobody's going to know. Big things come in small packages. Now I want to talk about designers. Designers, you should be influencers. And a designer influencer. Because at the end of the day, these days, we you can't just have a brand. And think it's gonna grow no you need to have a personality or something that people want to be part of so people are not just going to be part of just clothes because they can get close anywhere but why is the reason why I want to purchase from you that's why influencers um, have a leg up with their audience and able to create a whole capsule collection for their audience because they built a whole audience you know and brands who see that can see dollar signs with those influences. So it could be the same for a designer as well. If you build an audience that loves and rave your designs, you can work with brands to help you um, fund some of the things that you need to be funded for your business. Yes, it's very hard. It's going to take a long time because brands don't um, gravitate towards us like that. They rather gravitate an uh, individual. But if you are able to capture your audience, they're going to go where popularity is, point blank period. Because if there's money to be made, they're going to go there to make money. Also, this is a message for my upcoming designers, designers who are coming into the space, um, especially black designers. Do not get discouraged. Just do the work. You know, always innovate, always create. Don't think that because you're getting hit on this side, this end of the spectrum, that your time won't come. Um, you can use me as an example. I'm still going to push through and still um, create because I have amazing ideas it's just that when you see your stuff being stolen stolen from it really gets you in a depressed mode and not want to create anymore because you feel like every time you're creating something um, all it's good for is to be stolen I want to give a big shout out to my customers who purchased my pieces in the past um, if it wasn't for you guys I don't know where I would be because you guys had helped me to make ends meet when I've seen nothing but bad things happen to me throughout the years because you made that purchase, helped me pay some bills, helped me eat and survive. Um, whether it was any of my informational subscriptions that I did in the past, I want to reach out and say thank you for that. At this point, it's just me trying to be better than what I was so that way I can stand out. But I'm going to stand for what I'm worth. And if you don't believe in that, that's fine. I'm just going to communicate to people who understand where I'm coming from. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do damage control and work on me and get my pieces to the next level.